What's going on guys, TTRX6 here, back for another Transformers review, and today we're taking a look at MP44 Optimus Prime, and this is the third masterpiece Optimus Prime that Takara has released, and this is kind of your more uh, cartoon one, as they're trying to say. Um, so, if you guys want to know how to transform this guy, please tune into last week's video. I'm not going to be posting how to transform this guy in this video. Uh, because there's just so much to go through with Optimus, and that transformation is so complex, they both warrant their own video. So last week we did the, the transformation, and this week we're going to do our thoughts. And some of the thoughts I'm going to say are objective, but a lot of them are subjective. So you're going to have to take what, what you value and decide if it's going to work for you or not. So let's take a quick look at the truck. Uh, first objective point I don't like is this gap right here. Um, I think it's a pretty big gap, and, you know, I, I just feel like, and I was looking at MP10 for comparison, the trailer really should have kind of hitched a little bit further forward to lessen the gap. So real quick, not to speak on it too much, but this is what I'm talking about. Here's the MP10 year, the horse version with the MP10 trailer, and you can see just how much smaller that gap is here than when we go ahead and we take our MP44 and place that on like you can just see it's you know it's sitting way too far forward it really should have moved forward a little more it does make the truck a little more unsightly to me so when we take a look at the truck I think the front of the truck looks beautiful it's really really nice you've got the side of the truck here looking good but when you come around to the back um, somehow it feels really long and you know and maybe it's the hitch not helping it maybe it's how the trailer sits but it feels really long but when you compare it to other uh, MP primes like here's MP10 it's maybe like five millimeters longer than this and if you compare it to the magic square it's actually the same size so I'm not sure why it feels so long maybe it's because this is less bulky than any of the other counterparts but Nevertheless, it does feel a little bit long. I don't particularly like seeing the, the chrome bits here. This doesn't bother me that much, but the chrome bits really draw my eye because of the way the light catches them. Now I will say, you know, no MP Optimus is clear of any of the robot bits. Like you still got the, the waists on both of them, but I do feel like the back cleans up overall nicer than what MP44 does. Also, another thing to note is when you compare some of the other offerings of Optimus, and there's Magic Square, and here's MP10, uh, the like gas can down here is way bigger and more pronounced on these two. And this looks small, and I think that may be contributing to why I feel like the truck looks a little bit odd. But undeniably, when you end up putting him with some other MP scaled vehicles, um, I think he looks just fine. The scale looks perfect, and the trailer is really nice. I do think I like the stripe on the original MP10 with the blue on it a little bit more, but I get that this is more cartoon accurate. So real quick comparison to the trailers. Uh, as you can see, you got the blue versus the black here. Uh, the wheels are definitely bigger on the MP10 trailer. Why is that trailer not interesting I never noticed that the back wheel uh, is it just because of the incline it's not touching the ground I never noticed that uh, the mp10 trailer is just uh, no it's about the same it looked like it was bigger in an earlier picture I took um, you do have some extra detailing with like the rivets here that are not present here and I guess like this air intake scoop on the back of this one is taller um, but not as thick as the mp10 one Let's see where we can get that. There we go, right there. It's a little bit smaller overall uh, and thicker. So one of the big wins of the MP44 trailer compared to the MP10 trailer, here's the MP10 trailer and you take your ramp out and you get your car out here and it just, it doesn't really work. Um, there's no angle that this is right. Like it hits the ground and the car has hit the ground uh, up here, it can't sit there. That's a problem. So MP44 came along and we've improved the doors a little. They don't open more than 90 degrees. They don't try to force them. You can see they're squared at the end and they will not open more. Um, but if you take the ramp out here, very similar how it works. It's almost like two times the length 
and the angle is so much less drastic that you can actually make him look like he's coming out the trailer. Um, the wheels are actually planted in the trailer and on the ramp. And then when you come down to the bottom, like he's not, well he is bottoming out in this case, but it's less noticeable than it is with MP10 who he's kind of nose diving into the ground. This one feels at least a little more reasonable. Looking at the underside of the MP44 trailer, they did pick out the silver in the tire there. I do appreciate that little detail. They didn't have to do it. Other than that, it's nothing too stunning. You will notice though that this part here is much bigger than it was on MP10. And this is the next thing they've done with the trailer that really wows me. If you push from the back side here, uh, I would not recommend pushing from the bumper um, just because you don't want to accidentally break it off. But it gives you a tray to store almost all his accessories. And I think that that was a super awesome decision by them. Uh, it doesn't take up any extra room, really. And yeah, just that clean, you know, everything's locked in, stored in place. I love that. So let's actually get a look at some of these accessories. Looking at the accessories in his trailer, uh, we've got a different rounded versus square plate Optimus Prime head. And a lot of these, like these are so thin on this guy that they on their own force want to bend inward. So be super careful with them. I do wish that they were a little bit thicker because it just doesn't feel like good plastic. You also have the battle damage prime, which I assume that these antennas are bent purposely and not bent out of the box that way. And the battle damage prime looks cool, but the problem is, is so much of prime is clean that when you add these battle damage things to them, it really kind of looks silly. Um, you got this one, very nicely detailed, where he's all ripped open there. Inside you got the Energon Axe, and you got these two effect parts. So it seems like effects are something that uh, Hasbro is much more, or Takara I guess I should say, is more interested in doing. So you can take these effect parts and you can put this here, and he comes with this jetpack, which we rotate this, and this, and then this plugs right into the top of the trailer. And then you can take your effect parts and clip them in place. And now you got a rocket powered trailer if that's something that you wanna do. Also the effect part can be added to the tip of the gun for a very nice looking effect. Another thing you're given is a Starscream head which looks fantastic and the little Starscream air intakes that go behind his head. We'll look at these more in robot mode. So where MP44 is concerned, they also decided to upgrade everything, which means upgraded and more humans. We've got Carly, Spike, and Sparkplug here. And I just am not really sure I agree with the decision for them to add ab crunches to these guys. Like, they're so small. Why do we need to have an ab crunch? What am I going to be making them do that they need an ab crunch? And then you got the ball joints in the so shoulders. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can have their arms out like this. But I just don't feel like that really does anything for these humans that I need them to do. Um, the hips also have ball joints, but they're, they're very limited. Um, and you can bend the knees and you can see because the ball joints are so small, they pop off easy and they make them look like gangly and disjointed. Um, I'm not sure why, let's take Spike here. I'm glad you put the helmet on him, but now he's smaller. And why did you decide the thing to upgrade this guy is not give him a face and it's to add ball joints. Uh, it's very, very strange. I don't think that there's anything wrong with the original MP human. You can get them in that driving pose. You can fit them in a vehicle and they don't fall apart. And these things are just not good. I don't know. I'm not sure why they made this decision. Of course, if you want to, you can open up MP10 here. And you know what? Let's see. Can the original one fit in there? No, he's a little big. So he had to be made smaller for that, and then they added the button. Look, I can't even get him to sit down with it. <laughs> and they're so small and stuff that like I legit was worried that I just broke his ball joints off. Like this is a terrible, terrible design. This is not what you should have done with the figures. You should have made the space accommodate the old size figures and just giving them a face. I don't even know. Somehow, 
Let's see, do you want to do it? Do you want to sit? Do you want to do? No? Okay, there we go. You can sit them in there, but outside of seeing them through that window, it doesn't matter because the front is not transparent. So, these are three accessories that if I can manage to put them back together, will be sitting in a box. And great, he is stuck in there for all eternity. Just kidding, I'll get him out, but it's just, what the heck, like look at that. Mm, you didn't need to do that, Takara. So a quick look at the axes, I do think that MP10 did it better, the axe is longer, I don't know which one looks more comically correct, but you do have the little extra spikes. Uh, I'm interested to see how this attaches to him, I've never tried it yet and the connection mechanism is strange, so we'll see when we get to robot mode, but definitely when it comes to the little extra accoutrements and styling, uh, the MP10 has the edge. So let's talk roller. This is the MP44 roller. You can see that he is very roller-like. Uh, the wheels look really, really nicely painted. No real detail on the bottom. Uh, that light looks good. Let's compare it to MP10, so as you can see, no wheel, deal no wheel details. Uh, you have that translucent plastic versus the painted yellow. There is a much nicer detailing in the top of roller here, uh, with the exception of the back. I think MP10 has it, but it has that extra little flap there. The seats are actually usable in this one. Uh, you could only get one figure in this, you could get four in the new roller, so that's pretty nice. He also has this little, and I don't remember ever seeing this in the cartoon, but you can open it up and see his engine, and I think that's kind of cool. So we're gonna open up the trailer, and once again, when you pull this out, the little extenders do come out here, and if you wanna get these down, there is like, I guess, the waffling kinda on the inside here. It does give you something to grip, so I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing in this case. Uh, and these come down, and you can see you got the little pegs here. That will make way to open the trailer, like so. Now inside the trailer, it's still a lot of nothing going on, but you do have some nice detailing on the inside. And you do have a place to store the little gas thing for roller. You got the places where your characters can sit, and you've got the central, like, teletran unit. So if you want, you can take your roller and you can secure him into here. Whoops, we don't want to do that yet. Uh, and that'll keep him from falling when it's moved around and that's pretty nice. But it does monopolize a ton of trailer space. If you are someone who likes to put your cars in here, you're not going to have any problems fitting one MP car in without roller in place. Additionally, however, you can slide this back and pull this out. And if you really just want to use it as a trailer for your MP cars, uh, Jazz may not be. Let's take Jazz out because Jazz is a little long. Can we fit two in? Yeah, I would say you could fit two in. Uh, it'd be a little tight, but they should both fit in there. Yeah, you can close the back door. So you could fit two in there. Uh, as you can see, Ratchet, because of his light bar, is a little bit too big for this. But the iron hide part of the mold will work. So as you saw, this central piece came off, and there's just so much you can do with this. Um, and this is where we're going to really try to fly through things here, because there's a lot of stuff um, that is either remember that thing from that episode, or this is a diaclone thing. So looking at the central piece here, um, he has a nice ratcheted center right here. It extends out nice and long. Uh, it does rotate around that. You do have the claw arm. Uh, both of them move up and down. This can swivel around to the top if you want it to. You can once again open the cockpit and put your MP drivers in there. Uh, the radar dish comes up and you can pop out these guns. You can also take these things, get this out of the way, like I said, bring this up. And pull these forward and now he's a little like they call it the control tower anti-aircraft gun uh, it's remember that thing from that episode I do not specifically remember this but it's apparently a thing you can also take this oh and these should be folded in I'm sorry when I did the wheels you can also take this bring this around here and you can take roller he's got the slot here and you can 
plug it right in here and then Roller can actually carry this like a trailer, which is pretty cool. I think that's a nice little touch. A quick jump back to Roller here and you can do a number of things. We can spin this around and with the handle folded back like this, you can make him hold MP44's gun. If you want to use the gas thing, you can plug that in here so Roller can dispense gas as an option. You can take your central command turret thing. Uh, let's lift this up, pull this here, and then this will just let roll uh, the central command thing come off of there. This then flips down like so, and you can actually peg that in for a combined mode roller. Uh, again, this must be a diaclone thing or something like that, and it makes me interested to know can my G1 Prime have this come off and connect to roller. I don't ever remember that being a thing. If you feel so compelled, you can take these doors and unclip them downwards, and then you can take this whole thing and extend it through the roof slot here. You can even, if you want, do it a little bit smaller like this, so you can close that up and have that, that battle station on the roof. Your roller with the one thing out can tow the trailer. He's not going to right now. There we go. He can, but it is back heavy. So um, he will be doing a little wheelie. So you can also go ahead and open these up here. So if you want, you can bring this out like this and have him out the front of the trailer like so and obviously you would close that up. Also if you want you slide this out put it the other way so it takes up more of Prime's trailer. Actually let's do this first. Extend this piece out like so and then put this in. Whoops. Wheels popped up. Put this back in the trailer like so and then you can close this back up again uh, which I think you have to bring the doors inwards this time versus outwards. You can do it either way with those particular doors. Um, but you could have it like that and then you could put your roller right on like that so you have this battle thing. So what I'm sure is another Diaclone hold over. You can set the trailer like that and go ahead and make a tower here. And then if you want you can take these and you can fold this platform down on each side which I think is a super nice touch. You can of course put your little repair unit guy like that and since we don't have them in robot mode here's uh, MP10 here don't tell anyone this is my trees in this version um, and you can have him being repaired with the gas can here now what's nice about these figures uh, even though they'll be sitting in the box if you did want them in the repair mode uh, there's actually I'm not sure if the if the trailer is magnetized or metal or they have the magnets uh, but as you can see they do just stick and there's four, two at the bottom, two at the top. That is a nice touch. So here's MP44 in his robot mode. Quick look at the face. I think it looks pretty solid. Again, wish these were thicker material. I don't think they needed to be as thin as they are uh, regardless. Uh, coming down to the body, it looks good. Really like this hip skirt thing where when you move it, it actually moves itself up. It may not be the prettiest on some angles, but I think it just... It's really nice that it does that. I think that's a nice little touch. None of the other skirts do that, but they all do get out of the way. Uh, articulation on this guy uh, is better than any Prime you've had before, I'm sure. You got the knee pad that kind of moves with his knee. Uh, it's pretty nice. There's definitely, if you're looking for a poseable Prime, this is it. Now, obviously you saw last week's transformation video. I do think that the transformation is over-engineered to the point of being a little frustrating. Uh, now I know that that allows this great articulation here, like he really moves like an action figure. And if that's what's super important to you on Transformers, then you probably are going to love this guy. To me, that's not so important because I don't really need my Optimus doing the Iron Man pose and such. Um, I always thought MP10 had just enough posability for what I needed him to do. Uh, but this guy, I mean, he can hold a sword across his chest if he really wanted to. There you go. Laser beam sword. Right? That didn't quite work. But you get what I'm saying. Like, he has a ton of posability. And in that regard, I think he's awesome. 
Now, the, the counterpoint to that is, I've heard people say, he looks like he walked right off the screen, and that I disagree with entirely. Um, and this is subjective, so if you think he does, no knock against you. For me, he doesn't, but when you see like these here, and then you get to the top, and you see all this here, um, and the side is all panel-y and stuff, like, to me, that is not what Optimus Prime walking off of the screen uh, looked like to me. So, I do find him a little underwhelming in that regard, that he does look like he is disjointed. And to a large part, that lack of immersion that's given by all the panels makes it look like a toy version of what fell off the screen. Same way as Megatron, there's just so many panels and stuff here uh, because of how he's engineered that it breaks that immersion for that cartoon accuracy. Now I don't think it necessarily looks bad, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it looks like it fell right off the screen. He does look like a great counterpart to this MP Megatron though. The one thing, they used metallic paint on Megatron's eyes which really pick up light well and then it's just, it is painted eyes on Optimus but why not make it metallic too so it kind of looks like it has some extra life. And you'll pardon me while I was looking at him, I did notice that I forgot to push the arms back in here so there was a little extra sticking out but still you got a lot of gaps here and stuff that just breaks that screen immersion. Now I want to kind of show you what I mean by that. Um, here's the Magic Square Optimus Prime. Now he's not as cartoon accurate in the chest here. Uh, this is more cartoon accurate for when you're looking at Prime. But like the lack of moving parts, like you don't see hinges in the front here, which this one could have moved them to the side probably. Um, the fact that you don't see the hinges, you don't see at the top any of the robot bits, you know, or any of the panels that move and slide around. Like, this one feels like a better cartoon representation than this one to me. And that's, again, it's a subjective thing. Now, I know a lot of you guys are not backpack people. Uh, his backpack is here. Uh, they probably, I don't know, they probably could have done without it. Uh, I'm not really sure where it fits in the truck mode. I can't think of it offhand. But it does have a switch on this side and a button over here. So I, so I assume an American version would come with Peter Cullen's voice. Um, I guess that the voice of Convoy in Japan is probably more iconic there than Peter Cullen's voice, but it's really hard to care as an American about the Japanese voice versus uh, good old Peter Cullen. For his gun here, the hands open up nice. They look like very organic hands uh, and I don't remember them being quite so organic looking in the cartoon. Like this feels like season three in the terms of how organic the hands feel compared to um, that like robotic kind of more blocky hand. Um, and he holds the gun just fine but like the trigger feels like it's up higher and he holds the gun kind of low so I kind of wish that his hand held it more up here perhaps but the way that it all pegs in uh, he's stuck not on the trigger. But I guess Optimus Prime is safety first and doesn't put his figure on the trigger until he needs to fire, right? So opening up his chest you can actually reveal the matrix compartment and that is a nice die cast matrix with very nice paint. It's probably the best matrix that I've seen. Uh, it's definitely better than the MP10 one because uh, they painted the jewel and I think it just really gives life to the Matrix. So per the instructions to get the axe on, we pull the hand off and I do not like that at all. But you take that and it kind of forms this thing and then you plug the axe into it like that. Um, mm, yeah, I don't... I don't think I like that because I'm afraid it's going to break the clip for the hand by pulling it off too many times and I don't feel like it necessarily secures the axe super well and like all of this panels and stuff wants to move when I'm trying to put it in there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I'm not going to put that on. Uh, I'm afraid of breaking that clip unfortunately. So if you want to jet pack up Optimus, you plug it into the top of this backpack and give him an even bigger backpack. There you go. And of course you could take the little accessories here and plug them into the back. So Optimus is blasting off. 
So of course way back when I said you can take this base here and use it for a flight stand for Optimus. The instructions don't mention it. The box shows it. Make sure that this is flat. Uh, kind of arrange it how you want and then this piece here which would slide in the roller slides into Optimus and you could use it as a flight stand. That said it's very it's not strong enough for Optimus so I just don't think that it's going to be successful as a flight stand. I mean, you could see he, the weight of this, it just doesn't work. You probably could tighten this, but it's already kind of stiff enough. I really don't want to mess with it too much, and I'm never really going to show Optimus with his jetpack like this, honestly. And if you want to change the head to Optimus, it's really easy. It just slides off very, very simplistically. So you could give him the Starscream head like this if you want to. So if you want the Starscream intakes on there, you end up opening this up and kind of clipping it on there. But then for whatever reason, I just feel like it doesn't allow, like see how this kind of all gets all messed up. Like I don't feel like the accessory really works that well because I can't plug in the back properly. And it always has this tendency to go to one side. Uh, all it does is clip onto that here. But if that floats your boat and that's what you want, then so be it. And for whatever reason, this head gives me the strikingly haunting feeling that there is new MP Starscream Thundercracker and Skywarp on their way using this very, very beautiful head. Uh, but once again, that's another set of seekers. So real quick, here is MP44 in the middle with Magic Square on the left and MP10 on the right. Uh, the thing that I think MP44 does best versus these two is the arm proportions. They definitely look more correct and all the articulation. If you are someone who likes the crazy amounts of articulation, you cannot beat this Optimus Prime. None of them can move the same way he can. Uh, this arm here, it's, it's unfortunate because for me, where my personal aesthetics and stuff are, if this arm were kind of smaller like that, and maybe that doesn't look so bad, but you lose the elbow, well, you kind of don't. But, you know, with the shorter arms not going down to his knees there, um, I actually think I still prefer MP10 to MP44. I'm not someone who does crazy poses on my shelf, and I feel like aesthetically, this ends up looking cleaner than what we've got going on here. Which leads me to the magic square. I feel like the magic square kind of embodies that cartoon looking Optimus um, without really so many compromises. Maybe slightly too long arms, but not as badly proportioned as MP10. Uh, and I just noticed that is the wrong way. Sorry about that. Yeah, so when it comes down to it, for my money, I would rather buy the Magic Square than this again. Um, it just, this feels more Optimus Prime to me. Uh, the thickness of the arms, I feel like, feels more cartoon accurate. The bulkiness of the chest, to me, feels like that heroic character Optimus Prime was. Uh, and this isn't bad. It's not bad. Um, but this one, to me, if I was trying to represent him in a cartoon manner, I feel like this one does it better than this one. And even coming down to, like, the faceplate, maybe I don't remember the faceplate right, but I feel like that looks more like the Optimus Prime's head to me than this one does. I don't know. If I switch the head out here for the more rounded head on Optimus Prime, it kind of... It doesn't feel right either. Like his eyes look really weird. Like this one on the left feels so much more Optimus Prime than on the right. The right feels like a human guy wearing a helmet. The left feels Optimus Prime. So I kind of am forced to use this one. You can see it's a difference really in the eyes and the way the faceplate is shaped. But from what I remember as a kid, maybe again, maybe my recollection is blurry. This just feels more like Optimus Prime's head to me. And real quick here, I just wanted to have him next to the real MP10, uh, not the treasonous one for the purpose of just seeing the color differences. So final thoughts, MP44, is he worth it? Well, subjectively, I say no. Um, to me, it's that lack of immersion that all these panels and the over-engineering gives. Uh, he's definitely better engineered than your MP10. He's better engineered than your Magic Square. But as a result, you get all these panels. And that, to me, 
does the same thing that this Megatron does that from day one I've never really liked him. Um, from one angle he looks good and then it's like from every other angle there's things I don't like looking at him. So when you have these other versions offered by other companies that, you know, do it cleaner and look nicer, to me I'm going to gravitate towards this. And when you say he's like a quarter of the price, like, well, that's pretty significant. You know, the only thing that he has a flaw on is that he can't attach to a trailer. Uh, I wish he could attach to one of the trailers. But if you are the type of person that loves posability and wants to pose your prime in all kinds of insane crazy ways, that's for you to judge uh, if this guy is worth his value. He's fun. I don't want to say he's fun to transform because he's not really fun to transform. He's kind of an exercise in frustration. Uh, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. But like MP10 was like one of those molds that I can pick up and like, you know, five years from now I'll still know how to do MP10. Uh, this guy is definitely the character that I'm going to have to look at his instruction manual next time I want to do it. Uh, to make sure I'm doing it right. So, you need to weigh that. I can't tell you if he is 100% worth his cost or not. Uh, that is up to you. So this is T-Tarek 6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you next time.